Is it not possible this famous off-ramp for Putin and Russia? Instead of the off-ramp, uh, we need to humiliate again. I, I will say that again. We need to humiliate Putin. We need to prove that his uh, policies uh, are dead end mm -hmm. and uh, they cannot produce any a positive effect for, for Russia, even for a, a, a longer term perspective. Hello, my name is Nicholas Fernville. You are watching or listening to an OSW interview. Today, I'll be talking to Marek Menkishak, the head of OSW's Russia department. In our previous conversation, we discussed the war in Ukraine from Russia's perspective and what Russia's goals are. Today, we will be talking about how the West can try and stop Russia from achieving those goals. Okay, so I'd like to begin with the basic question. Why does the West need to stop Russia? Because otherwise, Russia will not stop attacking the West. We have to understand what is at stake in this conflict, which is happening now in Ukraine. So this conflict is not about some piece of territory. Uh, this is not only about uh, action of Russia towards Ukraine, which is aimed whether at subjugating the country or to destroy it. Uh, we have to understand still that it's a big European country uh, in strategic location. And of course, such an event, so subjugation of destruction or destruction of Ukraine, would have uh, had enormous negative effect on the European security. But uh, we have to understand that it goes beyond Ukraine very much, because Russia's goal uh, also will go much beyond Ukraine. So actually, the subjugation or destruction of Ukraine is just a, a part of Russia's goal, uh, Russia's strategy, uh, which is directed first of all, against uh, the, the West, understood as a certain political security community. Uh, so the aim of Russia uh, is not only to uh, control the so-called post-Soviet area, but also to destroy the current uh, post-Cold War security order in Europe. But not uh, even that is, is the limit of the Russia's aggressive plan. Russia actually strives for fundamental change of uh, global order. Uh, Russia seeks its place. Uh, it's in the order which will be mostly uh, dictated by Ch China, which is a, a growing uh, a superpower. Uh, Russia understands that uh, that's a kind of inevitable uh, outcome of this change of global order. Uh, and for Russia, it is absolutely crucial that the leadership of the West headed by the United States will be finally put to an end. Uh, and uh, the success of Russia on the Ukrainian front is for Russia absolutely crucial as a way actually to achieve this very far reaching goal. So in the opposite perspective, the initial thing that needs to be done is Russia needs to be stopped in Ukraine. Absolutely. Uh, at Ukraine is the key battlefield. Uh, without actually succeeding in Ukraine, uh, Russia is not able to pursue its further aggressive goals. So it's absolutely logical that the best way actually to undermine Russia's ability to uh, make harm to, to, to the West and to the global order is actually stop Russia in, in Ukraine. So what you are saying is um, helping, for example, arm Ukraine is very much in the West's interests. Absolutely. Uh, Ukraine not only have to survive uh, during this war, Ukraine has to succeed in this conflict uh, with uh, Western support. Uh, by succeeding, uh, I mean basically to humiliate Russia and to prove that the aggressive uh, posture and aggressive policy of uh, Putin's regime uh, are dead end. Uh, simply, they cannot be effective. They cannot lead to uh, the desired results. 
So basically, there is no other choice for Russia to change the course uh, or to, to the best to change the, the regime, which is unable actually to, to change the course of uh, this aggressive policy. Okay, these are um, very strong words, humiliating Russia, not very popular at the moment. Um, is it not possible this famous off-ramp for Putin and Russia? I think this is a big misunderstanding on the part of the West that actually we uh, need to provide an off-ramp for, for Putin. Uh, the problem is that whenever we say it uh, or suggest it, actually we are uh, helping Putin to continue its uh, aggressive policy course because such communication uh, actually is, uh, per per is, is perceived in Moscow as a sign of weakness. Mm -hmm. um, therefore, uh, what is uh, needed is actually the opposite. So creating the image that uh, we are absolutely determined to uh, make Russia lose uh, and we are ready to pay the costs which are, are involved with, uh, with that leaving no hope for the uh, Russian regime and especially broader Russian elite, uh, which is the key uh, in actual, in, in, in um, uh, have, having the ability for Russia to continue this kind of policy, that it's impossible actually uh, to have a success uh, continuing this kind of aggressive policies. Um, therefore, instead of the off-ramp, uh, we need to uh, humiliate again. I, I will say that again. We need to humiliate Putin. We need to prove that his uh, policies uh, are dead end mm -hmm. and uh, they cannot produce any uh, positive effect for, for Russia, even for a, a, a longer term perspective. Uh, OK, well, I wanted to um, go into the detail of um, how exactly this humiliation could be brought about. But you talk about the longer term perspective. Do we see this as a long term battle? Uh, you mentioned that Ukraine is the main battlefield with Russia, but uh, what are the other battlefields and how long will we be fighting this war? Well, I think there are, there are two messages here. Uh, one is the, uh, uh, the, the good uh, news and what is the bad news. The good news is that Russia is failing. Uh, this is a very good news. Uh, Russia completely underestimated both the uh, resistance of uh, uh, and resilience of Ukraine, its people, its armed forces, but also it hugely underestimated the West's uh, cohesion, the West's uh, determination uh, to support Ukraine in this effort by political, economic, and especially the military means. Uh, so the result of that is the complete failure of Russia's strategy uh, in Ukraine. Even the minimal goals of, of Russia uh, in this operation has not been achieved. Um, but there is another uh, 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 news which is bad uh, for us. Uh, that there is no indication that Russia uh, plan to reconsider uh, its uh, policy goal. They are still maximalistic. Uh, the lessons that Russia learns, seem to learn from, from that uh, failure, is that it needs more time uh, and uh, it, it needs to pay more costs for the eventual victory. But still, I think, there is this residual thinking within the uh, especially narrow circle of the ruling elite in Moscow that, uh, well, in the longer term, uh, time works for Russia uh, because it has more resilience, it has more determination, and it, it strongly believes in inherited weaknesses of the West as a community. Uh, and individual Western countries. Uh, they believe that the West is uh, deeply uh, involved in multi-layered crises, uh, political, economic, social, ideological, 
and it is not resilient enough actually to uh, to uh, continue the confrontation, uh, especially on the on the scale we are witnessing now for a longer period. Um, so Russia bets actually on a longer term inability of the West to be resilient enough to continue its support for Ukraine, uh, especially in uh, uh, military terms, but also in financial uh, terms. Um, and uh, it creates certain hope uh, within this narrow ruling elite that eventually Russia may, may succeed. So because of that, uh, actually it is at most importance uh, uh, to to undermine this kind of uh, belief. So uh, it it leads to to actually a, a two prone uh, strategy uh, of the West. So one part of it, uh, a shorter term strategy, which means a strategy for next few or a dozen of months to come, is to uh, a certain search search of support for Ukraine. Um, the the uh, goal of that uh, strategy is actually to um, guarantee a visible and deniable victory of Ukraine on the battlefield uh, uh, in Ukraine. Undeniable uh, in Russia. Yes, absolutely. The, it, it means victory which cannot be anyhow undermined uh, downplay uh, whatever uh, however uh, explain or justify so the, the victory which uh, will prove uh, beyond any doubt that this kind of uh, aggressive Russian policy brings no positive result that Russia is unable uh, to achieve uh, desired political or military goals uh, so actually the only uh, way is to seek the way out from from that. So this is the this is the the goal. The optimal, of course, the optimal uh, result would be uh, incentivize the regime change in Russia, mm -hmm. uh, because we have to understand that the essence of the problem, the core of all of that, is the nature of the Russia's regime. This is about concrete people who run Russia. This is about Putin himself, which is absolutely obsessed with his imperialistic ideas. Um, and he uh, has stuck, has stuck in, in Ukraine. He uh, basically became a hostage mm -hmm. to this conflict. Uh, and he also uh, made the hostage uh, of his elite, the Russian elite and the whole Russian society. Um, uh, so uh, the best way, actually, to uh, create a, a hope for longer term stability, predictability in Russia is contrary to the popular uh, 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 thesis, a regime change mm -hmm. in Russia. Of course, it is not up to the West to create that. Uh, but, but we could bring about pressure. Yes, to, exactly. To incentivize it, as you said. Yeah, the, the, this, this is simply we need to incentivize. We, we need to uh, create conditions to uh, help to create conditions. And this is, uh, uh, big, this is the, the, whole, the whole strategy of pressure through economic sanctions, through political sanctions, but especially through military and, and other types of support for Ukraine, current, leading to its undeniable success. Okay. However, mm -hmm. however, um, we have to understand that uh, uh, such an optimistic scenario, uh, uh, which I've described, uh, meaning that the regime changes and eventually the policy uh, of Russia changes, is not the most realistic, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. uh, we could see that the level of pressure uh, and the the Ukrainians' uh, capabilities uh, are not yet enough, actually, to guarantee such uh, such a great uh, uh, victory. 
meaning the liberation of most, uh, if not all, occupied territories of Ukraine. Um, so we have to prepare for the other part of the strategy, which is a long-term uh, a strategy of conflict uh, uh, with Russia. So we are here to talk about uh, a kind of new uh, policy of containment, but extended containment, uh, very much proactive, not of only defensive uh, uh, policy, which is supposed to uh, uh, help to resist the, the Russian aggressive policies, but actually to, in the long term, to undermine the Russian regime by all possible means, especially through economic pressure, but also through uh, political isolation uh, and to the uh, long term, long term support mm -hmm. for Ukraine. Well, could I could I stop you? Because this discussion is uh, going to be partnered by uh, which, uh, your text, which you've written for OSW, will provide the link in the description to this video. And you encapsulate many of these ideas very, very nicely in what you call the five Ds. Yeah. And one is denying Putin victory. Yeah. So we, we've got a little ahead of ourselves yeah, on this one. Key, yeah. um, denying his regime legitimacy. I think you've touched upon this. And then there is decoupling Russia and the West economically, deterring Russia and defending the Western and NATO states. So I guess the next step very proactive is decoupling Russia and the West economically. How far should this go? We should not be partners at all? No oil, no gas? Uh, well, we have to understand that uh, at the source of the ability of Russia to continue this kind of aggressive policy are uh, serious incomes uh, uh, revenues which Russia uh, makes basically on the uh, uh, hydrocarbon exports. This is about oil, uh, the, this, is, this is about oil products, this is about natural gas, uh, to a less extent the, the, other, the other resources. Um, and the crude reality is that for decades, uh, Russian capabilities have been built uh, basically mostly on the resources uh, uh, Russia, financial resources Russia received by trading with the West, especially the European Union member states. Mm -hmm. um, Europe, European Union, has been the most important trade partner of Russia. Uh, occasionally, uh, Russian trade uh, with the EU as a as a whole uh, went uh, up to a sixty percent of its of its trade, and then slowly it has of been its trade, decreasing. Uh, the EU's or Russia's? Uh, Russia's trade. Uh, it has been decreasing, of course, uh, s systematically over the period of recent years, but still. Uh, it is the EU uh, which uh, has provided the most uh, a part of the uh, financial resources Russia had. And it, that was used actually for the war against the West. So we, the, the crude and, reality and is it that... it continues to yeah, be exactly. funding the war. The, the crude reality is that we have funded, uh, to a large extent, Russia's war against us. And Russia is at war with us. There's, there is no doubt about it. I mean, this is this is the way the people in the Kremlin, the Putin himself, think. Uh, they believe that they're not only fighting Ukraine. Uh, they they believe they're fighting the whole West. They're fighting the U.S., NATO, and the EU uh, in Ukraine. Um, so uh, they are in this mental state of war with the West, at least from the, uh, the year 2013. Uh, but actually, this kind of systemic conflict in their perception uh, started uh, at least in, in, in the year 2007, at least that was the, the year where symbolically it is marked by the Putin's speech at Munich, uh, uh, January 2007. 
but uh, it was actually decided this ch change is sort of a change of policy caused by Russia uh, a few months earlier at the uh, uh, ambassadorial uh, um, gathering in, 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 in Russia. So it is absolutely not acceptable that we continue to finance war which Russia carries on not only against Ukraine, but also against us. Uh, and I have to remind that there are very crude, concrete examples how Russia uh, fought war, has been fighting war against us, and not only against Ukraine. So there were numerous cyber attacks, some of them against the critical infrastructure. There were uh, attempts to um, uh, engage into political uh, uh, sabotage, uh, subversion uh, inside uh, the Western states, elections, presidential elections in the U.S., presidential elections in France, um, and attempt to influence German uh, politics, politics of other countries, attempt to have a coup d'etat in Montenegro, um, political killings uh, on the territory of the EU and NATO member states, the use of uh, uh, chemical weapons, on the territory of the United Kingdom. Uh, and um, there are numerous uh, uh, elements of, of that aggressive Russia's policy. Um, also the violation of air spaces, the provocative, provocative uh, military uh, exercises, uh, harassment of, of uh, 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 both civilian and uh, uh, military uh, aircrafts. Uh, there are numerous uh, examples of, of those uh, very aggressive policies. Um, Russia made clear it has both capabilities and uh, political will to use the, some extreme uh, measures. Uh, and uh, the example of that was the, its attack on the Nord Stream gas pipelines. Uh, of course, we, uh, we have no kind of absolute indefinite proof uh, for the uh, Russian uh, culprit. Uh, but uh, there are all important indications that it was, uh, it was Russia who actually uh, done this sabotage F as a sending signal towards the, the West that it's actually prepared to harm us uh, very much. Um, therefore, um, since uh, Russia is at war with us, we cannot uh, feasibly uh, continue to uh, carry on the policy of financing Russia. And if we uh, take the numbers uh, at uh, the peak of the 2022 in the spring, uh, the European Union member states uh, uh, have been purchasing uh, Russian uh, uh, hydrocarbons uh, for the for the uh, for the cost of one billion euro per day oh, per, per day. day. Uh, this number has uh, gradually decreased. At the end of the last year, it was six hundred forty millions euro per day. Now it's even less. Uh, but and we expect it to continue to decline. Yeah, we do, especially because there is a systemic uh, and policy of both the EU and the major member states of the EU to actually decrease the dependence on the Russian resources. But we are still there. We are still buying to a smaller extent uh, Russian oil. Some countries do that. Uh, there are no fully fledged, full fledged embargo on, on Russian oil. There are partial embargo imposed on uh, maritime uh, supplies, but not uh, pipeline supplies of Russian oil. Um, still, we, uh, despite of, of actually Russia uh, uh, cutting most of its supply of natural gas through the pipelines uh, across Europe, we are still uh, buying uh, Russian LNG uh, and uh, also the LPG 
the part of uh, uh, also uh, our uh, our uh, economic cooperation These is still in going. Liquefied gases, yes, which yes. Are, are normally yes. um, sent by uh, ship. The LPG LPG is used for mostly for transport for for cars and for mm-hmm. for buses. Uh, it's still imported from Russia. Um, uh, so uh, Moscow, Moscow still, still can uh, can uh, uh, um, profit from that. According to you, uh, the the last ten uh, waves of sanctions imposed by the EU, which by the way are very important and very serious, have led to a cut uh, of the pre. Uh, 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 conflict uh, levels of trade uh, with with Russia mostly by by half so it's it's uh, it's uh, half uh, the, 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 the the trade over uh, turnover trade turnover between the EU and and, and Russia has been uh, uh, limited more or less by half uh, because of this uh, sanctions, uh, but what about the rest? Uh, the we still trade. We <laughs> still trade uh, with Russia, and still there is resistance uh, among some member states uh, of the EU to extend the, the sanctions. We need to change that. Uh, Marek, you mentioned uh, the importance of strategic communication. Could you elaborate on this subject a little? Yes, I think it's absolutely crucial to have the proper strategic communication. Uh, and by that, I mean that we should very much avoid sending uh, certain signals to Moscow, which would be interpreted as a sign of weakness by the uh, narrow Putin's elite. Uh, by that, I mean any kind of declarations that we would like to de-escalate the conflict that we are seriously worried about the potential for its escalation, that we uh, do not believe in military solution to that conflict, and we are very much for the diplomatic uh, methods to uh, try to somehow uh, resolve that, Uh, that we should do whatever we can to stop uh, the war, to uh, get into a a level of uh, global conflict. Uh, We should uh, really escape the uh, risk to get into Third World War. All this kind of messages, uh, along with the messages what we should not do in our support to Ukraine, because also that was part of some sort of communication that we are not going to send uh, any troops, that we are not uh, going to cross certain lines in our support for for Ukraine. These are very bad signals because actually they uh, incentivize hope within the Russian regime at persuading uh, Moscow, persuading the Kremlin actually to carry on aggressive policies. So we rather should do the otherwise. So basically to threat Russia with potential uh, retaliation uh, with our uh, increased support uh, for Ukraine without uh, uh, major red lines. Um, And actually we should uh, demonstrate our determination Mm -hmm. to create an image that it is beyond uh, possible uh, for for the West to discontinue supporting Ukraine. So we, we are not now communicating with Moscow, fortunately. But um, the message you would send to Western policymakers would be Russia only responds to force. Russia understands force and Russia understands uh, tough uh, uh, policies. Uh, Russia, because Russia inherently believes uh, that the West is by definition uh, weak and uh, risk averse and prone to some uh, uh, psychological warfare, uh, we should uh, basically demonstrate that we, on one, on the one hand, we are ignoring that. And on the other hand, we actually, we are ready to, to take this challenge uh, and to respond 
to that and actually to impose more costs on Moscow. This is the the message really which would d- discourage uh, 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 Russia. Uh, and the element of that, of course, is denial of dialogue. Uh, Moscow seeks any sign that the West is uh, fed up with the conflict uh, and the, we rise with the rising costs of, of that and is seeking to actually to freeze this conflict, which would be a great help for, for Russia because uh, any freeze of that conflict uh, would mean that uh, Moscow uh, have ability to recover. And of course also the part of that uh, will be Moscow seeking uh, uh, de-escalation of sanctions, de-sanctioning mm. basically. And any creating any hopes and any signs that we would be ready for that is very dangerous. It's very counterproductive uh, because again, it increases hope for for uh, Moscow that simply it can outweigh the, mm-hmm. the the West, and the West eventually will have to pressure Ukraine to uh, uh, make concessions to Moscow. Okay, so I think you would uh, agree that uh, the uh, the ICC arrest warrant for Putin is the kind of message we should be sending out. What? How could we follow this up? What kind of action could be taken next? Yeah, this is definitely very, very useful. This is a part of the uh, important element of our uh, policy, which is an attempt to delegitimize Putin. So basically, the idea behind is to create the image, basically, that Putin is a toxic figure. Um, For two uh, uh, for two uh, kind of uh, 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 reasons one is make him a toxic figure in, internally in Russia so suggesting that D- basically divide and conquer yeah that 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 uh, his uh, his his you know the, the problem is the Moscow propaganda the Kremlin propaganda uh, relies a lot about this image that Russia, if not, is not maybe not loved, but it is feared. And uh, the Putin is uh, an, a, an effective uh, leader, which actually enforces also uh, continuous dialogue with him. So any dialogue, direct especially dialogue with Putin, any meeting, any phone calls, any messages directed to Putin himself actually are supporting and helping this Kremlin's propaganda. But this has been mostly cut out. This was seen at the beginning of the True. And this is a very, very right policy, which should be uh, somehow corroborated, but also expanded. Uh, We should continue the practice that uh, Western leaders are not... And not only not meeting Putin uh, himself uh, or his close associates, but also do not participate in any meetings which involve them. Uh, so basically creating a pressure for the third countries, for the non-Western countries, actually, for to expand this kind of partial isolation of, of Russia. This is an important element of this delegitimizing effort uh, uh, against against Putin, which uh, not only help uh, uh, to d- delegitimize him internationally, but also sends this message towards the internal uh, Russian elite that Putin is toxic. Mm-hmm. One should avoid him, and actually his policies are ineffective and create, well, how, create do, more, how does uh, the Russian isolation. internal elite avoid Putin? They are <laughs> beholden to him. Um, well, it is you know it's 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 about the it it's a, it is about a, a psychological uh, certain psychological uh, assessment. Mm-hmm. Um, what is the what is the balance between the costs, growing costs of uh, Putin's aggressive policies? So actually. Putin as a liability, uh, as a a leader, uh, as a kind of guarantor of stability of Russia and its future success, um, and uh, the costs of uh, resistance and costs of getting actually helping 
uh, 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 getting rid of Putin, uh, helping to undermine this uh, this regime. So it is important to uh, change this balance. Uh, so one part of that is fear of Putin, which is clear for any part, any member of the Russian elite is is fear. Uh, of of Putin and possible possible reprisals, including assassination. Absolutely, uh, not only losing uh, money, not only losing positions, but also losing lives uh, of their own, their families, and so forth. So uh, the other part is is important to to create this uh, image of the deadlock and the rising costs that these people suffer personally. And, and these people should not have any hope that uh, Putin can be successful in a, in a longer term. It will create this change of balance, uh, which would eventually may, it is not a guarantee, but still there is a possibility that they will reconsider uh, the in the long term the support for, for the Kremlin because of this uh, these factors. And the element of our policy also should be a, some attempt of a trade-off uh, with the members of uh, broader Putin's elite. I'm not meaning his the closest associates, which mm -hmm. some of them are really sharing Putin's views, uh, highly anti-Western and uh, imperialistic. But uh, a lot of members of a broader elite actually uh, would like it to, to change this, uh, this policy, as we believe. So uh, they should somehow be offered rewards like these sanctions, the listing from the sanction lists. So uh, some smaller offerings. Yes, so. the, the offerings not for Putin himself, but for members of his elite, but not unconditionally, but conditionally, conditioned on their uh, possible involvement in the actions which will undermine the, the regime. So support for the opposition, support for Ukraine, uh, providing information crucial for, for the sanction and for the p political pressure on Russia and so forth. Uh, it this is the proper way, I, I believe, to, to have this these trade-offs. So this is about the, the, this part. But the other part, of course, are the sanctions. The uh, uh, increase, the sanction pressure is absolutely essential part of the strategy. So in terms of sanctions uh, extension, the crucial is actually to uh, to cut off the uh, European market, especially energy market, from Russia. The paradox of that is that it was partly done by Moscow itself, which mm -hmm. have it introduced uh, their own sanctions against us. Uh, so we have to continue that. And we uh, first of all, we have to create irreversible changes. So we have to, for once and for all... Uh, can, I, can I ask, did Moscow sim simply misfire with these sanctions against the West? Uh, because are we sure that the sanctions are, only, are in our interest yeah. if they were led by Moscow? Was well, it a mistake? Well, they, yeah, that was, I think, the, the, this is import, a very a, a good example of the way of thinking of, uh, of the Kremlin. They truly believe the West is inherently weak mm -hmm. and very much uh, 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 lack of resilience. Uh, so uh, by the determination they've um, uh, exercised, they proved by cutting uh, actually themselves their profits from, from, the, uh, um, from the sale of, of energy resources, uh, they meant to create uh, uh, both the economic crisis uh, uh, in the uh, West, especially in, in, in the European Union, uh, but also to create this psychological shock effect, basically to show the strength and determination, uh, to prove us that we have no other choice, actually, than to re-engage because... Russia is invincible, you yes, are weak. Yes, that, that, that Russia is absolutely determined. Uh, and uh, they, they were wrong in this analysis. Have they noticed they were wrong? 
Because of the lack of results, because of... Mm. But, uh, but Russia is aware that they, <laughs> the West is tougher than they thought. Yeah, but still, the problem is that they still think, well, it's a matter of time. Mm-hmm. That is their their bet. Uh, and our job uh, as the West uh, is actually to prove them wrong, uh, to create this image that, no, uh, we, we cannot, you cannot outweigh us. You cannot undermine our resilience. Uh, you cannot... Uh, brought us, bring us to our knees, uh, for example, by uh, cutting off uh, supplies. Uh, Because we are actively and effectively uh, decoupling from you. Mm -hmm. So this is about the the, the whole idea of decoupling. It is is closing the gaps. This is about the closing the vulnerabilities we have to change the, 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 the potential, to uh, simply dismantle this whole infrastructure of Russia's influence, economic influence, by denying, by changing, by um, pivoting to, to other sources, both sources of energy and directions of uh, uh, flow of, of energy so you mean resources. Re- renewables, but other, absolutely. simply other exporters. Yes. yes, absolutely, both ways. And energy efficiency. Of course. So it requires, of course, the major overall of our economic model, because some of our economies, I mean, economies of some member states, like Germany, for example, have been largely relied upon this uh, assumption that we will continue to have this interdependence, in especially in economic and energy field with Russia which proved to be highly uh, dangerous. Mm-hmm. Uh, now we are, have this policy of, uh, of decoupling, but we have to uh, increase that in terms of uh, scope and in terms of uh, time. So we have to be hurry because uh, uh, there, is, uh, there is an issue of, of further, uh, further um, ways to secure our, our supplies uh, to, for the safety of our, our population. Um, so, again, the part of this uh, sanction policy should be these effective decoupling, but the other part would be the extension of sanctions, uh, like de swifting, so called, uh, mm-hmm. uh, the, the rest of the key Russian banks, especially Gazprom Bank. Removing them from the SWIFT yes, system. Yes, exactly. The Gazprom Bank is still not uh, uh, removed from the, from the SWIFT scheme because it is now the, the, the major bank which uh, proceeds uh, with the contractual uh, um, uh, financial. Uh, um, financial schemes uh, involved with uh, with the trade, still ongoing trade uh, of with resources with with Russia. But these are not the only transactions it it can do. So yeah, but it it is it is also used uh, indirectly by the other banks. So it it it, it creates a loophole in mm. the in the whole system, which which Russians effectively use. The other part of this increasing sanction pressure is to address the uh, the ways to circumventing sanctions by Russia, because Russia learned somehow also partly, indeed, to circumvent the sanction regime. Uh, and the part of it is so- so-called parallel imports and use the, the other countries, the third countries, for the re-export. Uh, and fortunately, some Western companies also participate unofficially in this kind of uh, 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 t- trade, shadow, let's say, shadow trade mm-hmm. with, with Russia, uh, we should uh, do whatever we can to close that gaps. Uh, engaging with the third countries in both positive and negative ways. Uh, this is the whole issue of the how to talk with the non-Western countries, but also with some other part, our partners. Countries like not only this such kind of countries like China, India, or, or Turkey, but also with Kazakhstan, with uh, Georgia, uh, those countries who really are important elements of this schemes to circumvent sanctions mm-hmm. uh, against Russia. So my uh, uh, idea is actually 
first to create incentives for them mm-hmm. because some of them are very much interested in expanding the trade links with uh, with the uh, western world especially with the eu and the us we have still some uh, rooms uh, to in uh, for maneuver in expanding the the trade ties the cooperation schemes with them uh, they are interested in, the, in those, so we have this kind of politi- positive incentives to offer. On the other hand, we have uh, so, sort of sticks uh, in our in our mm-hmm. hand by uh, various types of sanctions, which should be directed not necessarily against the countries, but for individual companies, sending clear signals mm-hmm. that we will not tolerate. But they would be direct sanctions against these companies, not um, yes. secondary sanctions. Yes. Uh, direct, I mean, both of them, uh, both of them. I mean, we should uh, create certain red lines uh, in this kind of trade, especially blocking any kind of uh, supply for Russia, which could directly support the war effort. Mm -hmm. Uh, So any military uh, supplies, uh, any kind of... uh, um, um, double uh, uh, s- uh, double standard uh, uh, products. Uh, uh, double usage. Double use. Yeah. Double use. Uh, double use products. Uh, um, these uh, should be a no go for 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 this uh, for this trade, uh, and we should uh, actively actively engage uh, with these. Okay, so. It's a very big discussion. We went through a lot today, but there is still very much left to discuss. Uh, But we will have to do that on another day. I hope you will be open to that. Sure. Great. So thank you very much, Marek. Thank you. Thank you for watching this OSW interview. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe to keep up to date with all the latest videos.